All right, so welcome back. This is the video for uh, quiz four, number three, solution. And here we're asked to compute the Laplace transform of T times the hyperbolic sine of AT. And according to the directions, we don't want to use the definition of the, of the Laplace transform, uh, but rather uh, just our, our table of Laplace transforms. So uh, we have some things in our table, right? We know the Laplace transform of T. Uh, we know the Laplace transform of hyperbolic sine of T. Um, unfortunately, we're multiplying them together here, and so we can't use either of those individually. However, uh, we have another technique that we, we learn, uh, which is we know how to relate the Laplace transform of a function y. Let me think of this as my, my function y. Uh, we can relate it to the Laplace transform of the derivative of y. And the relationship is that L of y is 1 over s times the Laplace transform of y prime plus y of 0. Okay, and recall this came from, well, we proved it differently, right? We started with L of y prime, and we proved that this was equal to S L of y minus y of 0. Okay, but of course, if you solve for L of y, you'll get the above line. All right, so this tells us that our L of y in this case is equal to 1 over S times... So we need the Laplace transform of the derivative. All right, well, we'll have to use the product rule on this. So we'll get hyperbolic sine of AT plus AT times the hyperbolic cosine of AT. Uh, let's see, then we need plus Y of 0. Uh, but, okay, at 0, well, we just get T equals 0 here, the whole thing dies. So actually, we, we don't even have to worry about our, our Y of 0. Okay. So we can break this up a little bit. Uh, this is Laplace of a sum. So we can actually break it up as the sum of the Laplaces. And the very first piece, we know, we actually know that Laplace transform, right? That's in our table. The Laplace transform of the hyperbolic sine of AT is equal to A over S squared minus A squared. And so the first piece will be 1 over S times a over s squared minus a squared. All right, what about the second piece? Well, it'll be the Laplace of at cosh of at. The a is a constant and will come out. I can combine it with that 1 over s. Right? Remember that 1 over s, of course, has to be distributed. So I'll have a over s times the Laplace transform of t cosh of at. All right. Well, we don't know the Laplace of t cosh of at, but we can play the same trick again, right? We go back and rewrite the Laplace of t cosh of at in terms of its derivative. So we'll make a little extra room here. We'll just copy over the other bit. Okay, we have a over s times. So again, we'll compute, uh, we'll do 1 over s times the Laplace of the derivative. Derivative will be cosh of at plus at cinch of at. So, we, of course, we need to know our derivatives. Okay, again, we can copy the first bit. And now we have a over s squared. And now the first sum end, cosh, we know the Laplace of that. That's in our table. So Laplace of cosh of at, that is s over s squared plus a squared. And so we'll get s over s squared minus a squared here. Okay, and then what's the last bit? Well, we have a over s squared, um, and then we have another a. So that's going to be a squared over s squared. And then we have the Laplace of, well, actually the original function. Right. This is actually just L of Y. Okay, so uh, it feels 
you know, at first bad because we just got back to the same problem that we started with that we didn't know how to solve. However, if you recall integration by parts, we saw this happen, right, with sines and cosines where you would use integration by parts, use it again, you get back to the original integral, and then we could play what we called the I trick. All right, so here the I is my L of Y. So let me take this equation, and I'll just rewrite it quickly here. So we have L of Y equals, and I'll see the first term was A over S times S squared minus A squared. And then we have, um, okay, one of these S's will cancel. So actually we have another A over S times S squared minus A squared. That's actually two of those. And then we have A squared over S squared times L of Y. Sweet. Okay, so these two this actually the combined. Result. All right, so let's solve for L of Y now. So how many L of Y's? I'll move this one to the other side. And on the left, I started with 1, but then I'm going to subtract A squared over S squared of them. And then on the other side, I'll still have 2A over S times S squared minus A squared. Okay, let's see. So we can put this together. Uh, if you think of 1 as being S squared over S squared, then this will be S squared minus A squared over S squared. And so we'll just multiply by the reciprocal, S squared over S squared minus A squared. And that'll give us L of Y is equal to S squared over S squared minus A squared times 2A over S times S squared minus A squared. All right. And S on the top and the bottom will cancel. We combine everything and we have 2AS over, hey, and there's two copies of S squared minus A squared. And so now we found the Laplace transform of Y. Remember, Y is what we were looking for, right? That is our T cinch of AT.